Hi folks, welcome back. My name is Kwekwe. I'm a pharmacist. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about Ozempic. I'm going to look at it from the perspective of the pros and the cons. So this is not going to necessarily be a review of the medication per se, as I've done so many videos on Ozempic, and I'm going to put all of them in the description. But today I want to talk about the good and the bad of Ozempic. And we're going to start with the good. The first good thing about Ozempic is good diabetes management or good, good blood sugar management. I mean, there is no denying the fact that Ozempic is one of the better medications out there for helping people to manage their type 2 diabetes. Ozempic has been shown in both study data and real life experiences that it is very effective at reducing A1C levels. For example, in one study which lasted 30 weeks, Ozempic given at 0.5 milligrams or 1 milligram weekly was able to reduce A1C by 1.4% and 1.6% respectively versus 0.1% on a placebo. In another study, they compared Ozempic at 0.5 milligrams and one milligram given weekly to sedagliptin. Now, sedagliptin is the generic name or the active ingredient in the medication called Genuvia. And what they observed was that after 56 weeks, Ozempic was able to reduce the A1C by 1.4% and 1.6% respectively using the 0.5 milligram and the one milligram versus, this, versus a reduction of 0.5% in A1C when the patients were put on Genuvia. So you can tell that even comparing it to other diabetic medications, Ozempic tends to outperform most of the other diabetic medications. Number two good thing about Ozempic is that it is effective at reducing weight. I mean, there is no denying that Ozempic is very good at causing weight loss or helping people to lose weight. At this time, talking about Ozempic and weight loss is like beating a dead horse. Study after study and real life experiences in this scenario also point to the fact that it is very effective at helping people to lose weight. Some studies point to people losing about 10 to 14 pounds in about 6 to 12 months of Ozempic. That's the 1 milligram. And that is even modest. There are many other stories where people would even lose more. Some people 20, 25, even 30 pounds on 1 milligram of Ozempic over that same period or that same duration. So there is no denying Ozempic can help people lose weight. And that is another plus for Ozempic. Now let's get into some of the less obvious good things or pluses that Ozempic has. And one of them is that it can reduce the risk of cardiovascular events. Ozempic is not only good for your waistline, but it is also good for your heart. Ozempic can help reduce the risk of developing certain cardiac events such as strokes, heart attacks, amongst others, by helping obviously to improve blood sugar levels, which is a risk factor for some of these things, as well as helping to reduce cholesterol. Now, this is especially true for people with type 2 diabetes who already have an elevated risk of such events. This usually goes unnoticed, but Ozempic is actually FDA approved to reduce the risk of developing cardiovascular events in adults with type 2 diabetes who have established cardiovascular disease. So by taking Ozempic, you can lose weight, improve your blood sugar levels, and also reduce your risk of cardiovascular events. Number four good thing or plus about Ozempic is that it can improve overall quality of life. Now you would agree with me that generally speaking, improving your weight or losing weight generally improves your quality of life. Losing weight can boost your self-esteem, confidence and mood. It can also make you more physically active, energetic, and productive. Improving your blood sugar, cholesterol, heart, and kidney health can also reduce stress, anxiety, and depression. So one can argue that taking Ozempic can help you boost your overall well-being and improve your health outcomes while you lose weight. Now, let's talk about the bad and the ugly. The first bad thing about Ozempic is that these benefits may not be sustainable long-term, so unsustainable benefits. So all these benefits that you gain by taking Ozempic, such as losing weight and improving your A1C levels, may not necessarily be sustainable long-term if the underlying cause is not dealt with or if the underlying cause. So for example, if it's a hormonal issue, if you don't take care of the hormonal issue, once you go off Ozempic, you are most likely going to reverse these gains. And that includes gaining the weight back. Matter of fact, I have a video where I detailed, I looked at some studies and I detailed what exactly happens when one stops taking Ozempic. I'll put that a link to that video in the description. You can take a look at it. The number two bad thing about Ozempic is that it is expensive. You know, it runs approximately $1,500 a month, at least here in the United States. I don't know how it runs in other countries, but here in the United States, if you don't have insurance or if your insurance doesn't cover it, you're looking at a bill of between thousand and thousand five hundred dollars a month and most people generally are not it will not be able to afford that 
And unfortunately, there is not a generic on the horizon. The medication is relatively new. It's still under patent. So the manufacturer will get an opportunity to sell it for a considerable length of time before a generic will come on the market. Now, if you are there saying that, okay, I don't care because it's covered by my insurance. Well, I think you need to have a plan B because in the event of anything happening, a change of jobs, uh, insurance companies change formularies all the time. If something happens and your insurance company or you fall into some kind of financial crisis and you are not able to afford the Zempic again, you need to start thinking about a plan B. So that's one of the knocks against Ozempic. It is very expensive. The average person affording $1,500 a month for a prescription is upset if you ask me. Number three bad thing about Ozempic is the side effects. You know, the side effects for some people, they thank God, it may be some people take it and they don't experience anything. But for a good number of people, the side effects can be unbearable sometimes to the point of needing to discontinue the medication. The side effects are typically gastrointestinal in nature. So you have things like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation uh, in percentages that I have displayed on your screen right now. And generally speaking, the higher the dose, the greater the incidence of side effects or the greater the frequency with which people experience some of these side effects. Now, in addition to the gastrointestinal side effects, there are other side effects that you also may want to watch out for. Some of them include fatigue, feeling tired all the time, dizziness, a headache, a low blood sugar or hypoglycemia. For some people, it may be bad enough for them to have to discontinue the medication and look elsewhere to achieve whatever goal that they were trying to achieve while taking the medication. Number four bad thing about Ozempic is that it may cause a disproportionate loss in muscle mass. Now, as we celebrate people losing weight on Ozempic and everybody's happy, what we also fail to realize or what some people fail to look at is that they fail to look at the total body composition of the individuals that are losing weight. A team of Japanese scientists in 2021 did a meta-analysis of these medications and what they noticed was that there was a significant reduction in what is called the fat-free mass in the people that were taking these medications. Now, fat-free mass is all your body organs or all your body composition that does not contain fat. So we're talking about the muscles, the tendons, everything that does not contain fat. And they realized that there was a significant drop in that. And usually your organs don't disappear. Your liver doesn't disappear. Your kidney doesn't disappear. So what you're actually losing is muscle mass. So that is something that you definitely should be paying attention to as you lose weight on Ozempic. You should make a conscious effort at least to improve your diet, make sure you're getting in all the protein that you need. If possible, consider some weight-bearing exercises, you know, some dumbbells, arms, strength training, just to make sure that you are not losing that muscle mass because there is definitely data to point that you are not only losing fat, you are potentially also losing muscle mass and you really don't want to lose muscle mass. Number five, and then there is this recent term that has been coined called Ozempic face. Now, Ozempic face is the term that has been coined to describe that sagging you know, look on the face because there's a lot of fat that has been lost whilst people lose weight on Ozempic. Now, granted, any type of drastic weight loss can result in that because you, as you lose weight from all the other body parts, you also lose weight from your face. But this has been noticed recently with Ozempic and what is happening is that it makes you look older. It may make some people's faces wrinkled and people are resorting to, you know, a facial fillers, which has its own issues. And that is a topic for a discussion for another day. So what is my personal take on Ozempic? Well, my personal take on Ozempic is that if you and your doctor have agreed that it is good for you in terms of managing your diabetes is one of your long term plans. The data as we have it right now, I don't know what it's going to be 10, 15 years from now, but the data that we have right now points to the fact that Ozempic is a very good and effective way of managing your diabetes. If you're taking it for weight loss, on the other hand, then you should really have a game plan. Uh, unless, of course, you have decided that you're going to be on Ozempic indef indefinitely, uh, which I don't personally think it's the best idea, but you have to have a game plan as to how you're going to maintain that weight loss once you lose it. I hope you found some value in this video. On your screen now is another video that I did answering some of the most popular questions about Ozempic. I hope you enjoyed that one too. Take care, stay blessed, and I'll catch you on the next video.